Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. It's your word. It's what leads us, guides us, and directs us into all truth in Jesus' name. If you have a Bible, open it up to Joshua 1.8. We're going to talk about how to have success, not, not worldly success in the world, what the world says for you to do, because that connects you to the world's economy. But we're talking about true success, which connects you to God's economy. Okay, so in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says you can't go by your five senses. So we can't go by our five senses. What do we go by then? We go by the Word of God. So how do you know if you're doing the Word of God? Well, what did God tell you to do? In chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, He says, as it is written. Okay? So, true success, Bible success, God's economy success is we go by it is written. Well, I believe the Spirit of God is leading me to... No. It's as it is written. So we go by as it is written, and then the Spirit may prompt us to Scriptures and things like that. But it's real simple. What's God got you doing right now? Then just keep doing it. Boy, that's simple, isn't it? He's got you in a safe place, a good place, a Bible place. Just keep doing it. All you're going to do is grow. See? And what happens is people, get, people start looking at uh, our God. Uh, people start looking at the people to see if it's successful. No. You know, there was a time that Colonel Sanders could not get people to eat his chicken. But he kept on frying it up and he kept on making it. But he couldn't get people to eat it. Well, Isaiah, he couldn't get people to believe what he was saying. He, had, he didn't have one convert. So you can't go by the people. I mean, you know, Paul, he was on the, when they had the shipwreck, he was gathering up wood and the people said, well, he's of the devil. He's of the devil. Well, why would they say that? Because a viper came out and bit him. He's of the devil, of the devil. But what did he do? Just say, yeah, I'm of the devil. I guess I might as well give up and close everything up. No, that ain't what he said. He listened to God. God said, shake it off in the fire. He shook that viper off. Wrote the majority of the New Testament. More books in the New Testament. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about success. Godly success. Oh, godly success means, when, means that we're reaching thousands. No. Godly success is when you're doing and you stick with what God told you to do. That's godly success. See, people go by outward appearance. People go by how much you got in the bank. People go by stuff like that. that what's a world's economy? But you can't go by that. If you do, you're going to lead you down the road of every time of a mess. What are you going to do if there's a law? Hello? What are you going to do if you have to walk by faith? And not by sight. Then you're going to have to go by what the Bible says. See that? I mean, Isaiah, he did, I had a friend of mine one time and he was trying to say that he was successful because he was the biggest in town. It doesn't matter if you're the biggest in town or the smallest in town. What It has nothing to do with the size of anything. It has to do, are you doing what God told you to do? If you're doing what God told you to do, and see then, before you start doing what God told you to do, I had a, 
guy one time, he said, well, I'm going to try it and see. Well, the Word of God don't work by trying it and seeing it. You're not going to rewrite the Bible. He said, well, Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes I'm healed. Well, yeah, I am if I don't feel pain. No. Well, I'm saved if I act saved all the time. No, you're going to have moments just like everybody else. No, success is that you just simply keep doing what God has told you to do. It's just, it don't, it don't change. See? God's Word don't change. So you have to get to where you don't change. God's Word is going to stay the same. So they have this human reasoning thing going on. Well, if that was God, then I'd feel this. Or if that was God, I'd see that. If that was God, no. It's God because the Bible says. Unless you're trying to base your life on something else besides what the Bible says, then you're going to be wishy-washy upside down And next time I see you. So James 1.8. Don't be unstable. How's an unstable person? They're going by something else other than what the Bible says. Well, the Bible says all of those that call the name of the Lord shall be saved. What are you calling on? You can't call on something else besides the Bible God and get Bible results. You have to stick with the Word of God. That's where... We're talking about true success, Bible, Bible success, true success. It also says in Corinthians that you don't compare yourselves among yourselves. Well, that person's successful because of that. Well, that person's successful because of this. No, we're successful because we're doing the Word of God. So you mean to tell me Romans 4, 17, when we call it the way we want it, we're successful. Yeah. Because that's what the Bible says. See, it's not how many books you wrote, although you need to write some books if God's having you write some books. But if not, you may be a person that's going to uh, make sure the bu books get written. Maybe your finances is, you may never leave the country. But your finances can send someone that's going to leave the country. Or travel around. You get the same reward. You get the same reward. Even though maybe you don't go into all the world and preach the gospel, doesn't matter. Because you're going and preaching through somebody else. <laughs> You see that? See? There's three parts to the ministry. There's the praying part, the preaching part, and the paying part. So we have to do all three parts. We have to be of the paying part, giving. We have to be of the preaching part. We ought to, every believer, don't mean you're a, a five-fold minister. It just means that you ought to be able to share what happened to you and use scriptures. You ought to be able to share the gospel with anybody and pray with them, Romans 10, 9. That's success. That's success. That's where Harvard and Yale missed it as a whole. They started out, we're going to emphasize faith in God. And now they emphasize everything except that. See? So what do you have to do? Well, you don't want to wind up like that. Yeah, but the big wig from the city started coming to the group or the big wig, you know, this or that. No, whether you think you're a big wig or a little wig or whether a has been or a used to be or a going to be or I'm somebody special, none of that matters. When you do Hebrews 11.6 and speak faith, you're pleasing to God. That's what the whole thing's about. Are you pleasing to God? Well, I'm trying to do right. 
It didn't say all of those that try to do right are pleasing to God. It says all those that do faith are pleasing to God. And then out of that faith relationship through Jesus and His Word, it's going to cause some things to be separated from your life. Stuff you don't need anyway. You see that? Isn't that good? So true success, Bible success, God's way of looking at it, and should be our way too, is not comparing ourselves with somebody else. Boy, that girl there, man, she can tear it up. Woo, I wish I was like that. No, just speak faith. See, when, you, when, when, when this is all said and done, and Jesus shows up, and in Luke, it says, when He comes to the earth, He, he tells you what success is. He's looking for a certain person. It says, when Jesus comes back, when He comes to the earth, will Jesus find faith? Boy, that's simple, isn't it? He's not looking for the religious. He's not looking for the ones that are faithful in themselves. No. Faith in God. It's not faith in ourselves. It's faith in God. See, we give up and we just surrender to Him when we hear the Gospel. See? And whatever He has us doing, we just stay faithful. Doesn't matter if everything's looking like it's working perfect. Doesn't matter if it looks like everything's falling apart. That has nothing to do with it. What has to do with it is we just keep doing what God told us to do. It's like these videos. You just keep doing what God told, what I told. Now, some people want to do what God told me to do. <laughs> No, you need to do and you need to do what God told you to do. See? Now, should we keep listening to the videos? Yes, why? Cuz we all need to grow in faith. That don't change. And these videos are all about faith-based material, faith-based based materials. So what are we talking about true success, godly success. True success is that we're doing what the scripture says. And how do we do that? It says, well, it says over there in, in uh, uh, Hebrews 11.6, it says it's impossible to please God if we do the Ten Commandments. No. Faith. Faith just simply goes by what the Scripture says. The Scripture says we're healed, so we say we're healed. The Scriptures say we're saved when we confess Jesus as Lord, so we confess Jesus as Lord. See, the Scriptures are not complicated. If you're trying to complicate it, you're trying to figure it out up here. Faith is the simplest subject in the whole entire Bible. Well, why? Because faith is of the heart, not the head. Now, you can renew your mind to faith, but it's still got to be from the heart. So you hear it, or now you're seeing it and hearing it. You're using your five senses. It goes down to your heart, which you cannot see. So much it comes back out of your mouth. You can hear yourself talking. When, when God hears you say it, there's a belief mechanism on the inside of us to believe. That's why it's so important to watch what we're, our eyes and ears. We're not saying shut everything off. No, we're saying do the Scriptures. That's where the power is at. That's where the anointing is at. Joshua 1 8. Don't let the word of God depart from your mouth, but meditate therein day and night. Then you will have good success. You see that? Everybody wants to be successful, but you have to do it God's way. Because I've seen people, they got the bigger, better everything, and then they, 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 they don't know how to. They don't know how to uh, resist sickness or resist whatever. Doesn't matter what it is. And then when the crunch comes, they don't know what to do through a crunch. 
You have to do the Word of God before, during, and after 24-7. It's a lifestyle. See? Or you'll start rubbing elbows with whatever, and you'll kind of let, you know, you'll like they say, oh, you know, that faith stuff. You can get away from them people. No. Faith in God is where it's at. It's never going to change. Anything that's not faith-based material, and I'm not saying that, that you're not maybe go in certain directions, but it all has to be through Jesus. It all has to be through His Word. If it's anything else except through Jesus, throw it out. You know? Throw it out. Well, I'm going to rub this bead, or I'm going to wear this certain clothing, or throw it out. Well, why? <coughs> the dispensation of Jesus is the last dispensation that's what gets you going and humming with all the rest of the word of god dispensation this needs a period of time so if you're trying to experience god and relate to him any other way except through jesus you're in the wrong dispensation you're never going to relate to god through any other pattern except the person of jesus see religion can give you lessons but only Jesus gives you life in His Word. So I want to encourage you today. Thank you so much for tuning in to Wednesday uh, Church, but also Wednesday Online Bible School. So you have a great one. You have a good one. Remember, don't go by your five senses. Don't go by faith and never goes by what it sees. Well, it looks like the crowd's dwindling down. I guess God wants, God, so, so God is leading by five senses now. No. So God is leading by crowds now. No. Don't be moved by crowds. Your success is not because you have a big crowd. I've stood before thousands of people. I mean, there's thousands of people watching this. Oh, getting ready to be about 32,000. It keeps clicking on here all the time. One video is 24, fixed to be 25. I mean... That don't mean you're successful. Success is simply doing and saying and, and doing what God's told you to do. Not crowds. Whether it's a big crowd or a small crowd, that don't mean nothing. I've stood before thousands and I've stood before one and I've stood before none. And I still just done what God told me to say and do. That's where the success is at. Success is when you're relating to God through faith, through Jesus and His Word. That's just that simple. It, success is not because you have a big salary or a small salary. Success is not because you live in a big house or a small house. Hello? Success is not because you have a big this or a small uh, way of life. It don't mean nothing. All those things are hunky-dory, but it don't mean you're not successful because success does not go by the five senses. Success in its simplest form is you just simply do what God has told you to do it. And the next day you get up and you do what God told you to do. And the next day you get up and you do what God told you to do. What is it that He has you do? Relate to Him in faith. You start speaking faith. Last thing you do before you go to bed, speak faith. Throughout the day when you get up, first thing you do is relate to God in faith. That's how you grow in faith. You just do it 24-7. It's not something you do one time. It's not something you do 100 times. It's not something you do one year. It's not something you do three years. It's like I had these uh, people one time and... They're not even alive anymore. But they, I was youth pastor at this certain church and these people, and they was highfalutin people. I mean, you think they love God, but they, they had it in their head. I'm going to do this for seven years, and at the end of seven years, if it ain't where I want it to be, I'm quitting. And they did. They walked right out of the ministry, right out of God's will, right out of the Word of God, and right out of life into death. 
No, the Word of God gives you life when you continually do it. It's not time-oriented. See? It's not time-oriented. It's because you continually do. That's faith. Faith has nothing to do with time. I mean, if, Je if Jesus tarries, which all the signs are showing He's not, but even if it does, even a hundred years from now, it's still going to be the same. Faith is still now. Faith is still what pleases God. Oh, there's been plenty of folks trying us. Well, a hundred years from now, I won't have any Bibles. That's what they said a hundred years ago. And a hundred years for that, and a hundred years for that, and a hundred years for that, two thousand years, even the devil. I got rid of Jesus. Shoot. He's more famous now than he ever was, even when he walked the earth. <laughs> Why? Because people got a hold of and he gave revelation knowledge to. That's the safest. Re that's, see, revelation knowledge means you can't be talked out of it. He was just talking to somebody at Walmart. Every time I'd give them a scripture, they talked herself out of it. Well, they can't have it then, even though it's in the Bible. So I'd give them another scripture, they talked herself out of it. See, it's not because you figure out in your head if it works or not. Now you got to do it by faith. That's never going to change. It's never going to change. Well, we're going to do something new. There's, there is no. It's never going to change. So who's going to do the changing? See, it's kind of like this. The guy said, I tried faith and I couldn't get it to work. No, faith tried you and you didn't work faith. So we have to work faith. The changings are our part. We're not going to change God. No. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what do we do? We take the Scripture and we just simply say it present tense. That's faith. That's pleasing to God. Yeah, but my five senses, my circumstances, my bills, my this, the that, don't matter. That has no, absolutely nothing to do with it. Because it's all subject to change. The only thing it's not going to change is the Word of God. So you have a great one. I'm glad you tuned in to Wednesday night online Bible school and Wednesday night church. You have a great one. God bless. Bye-bye.